Hey, what's up? Welcome to the Vineyard Collective Podcast. I'm your host today, Samuel Warden, and I've got two amazing guests. I've got the Mike Yoder and the Leah Wenger. Welcome. So glad you guys are here. Thanks for having us. Thanks. Thanks for having us. Excited I, to be here. I've been calling Mike Michael all day, and I'm not sure why. <laughs> It's really That's better when you middle name him, Michael Dean. Mine's Samuel Dean. I know. It's, I've it's got true. two Deans. There's two Deans here. So two Deans. You got a lot to deal with. I know. Okay. I know. So, so today's question to get us going is going to be, what has one thing that you've learned or taught yourself over the pandemic? Have you like learned any new skills? Have you not learned any new skills? Leah is an Instagram artist. <sighs> So an Instagram artist. Yes, this is true. Yes, apparently, so, good you know, I did not. I didn't learn. I didn't learn any uh, any guitar skills like you have or Darn anything it. like that. Well, I attempted, still time. and then I just put it back down. And then you put it back down. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I don't have time. Yeah, like, I don't have time. Leah, how about you? Anything? Anything interesting? Anything fun? Man, I would love to say I like like baked a lot or did something really exciting. I have something that I, I've noticed oh, you do more. What? I've seen you go on bike rides in the outdoors that I've seen you go outdoors more that is than I've ever true. seen you since I've known that is, you. That is not wrong. Actually, there's been a lot more outdoor time. That's uh, true. That is very true. In Mike as well. Mike, you've been, that, I think you enjoy the outdoors. Well, I do, but with our family, we did a lot more exploring of kind of like local parks. I didn't yeah. realize how much stuff was parks. here. Yeah. Yeah. There was like a lot of stuff real. that we, like even the things that I knew, we just never went. Yeah. But like One during the pandemic, especially in the early days when all our kids were home, it was yeah, just yeah. like, yeah. Oh. hey, let's get out of the house. That's a field trip day. Yeah. So yeah. A lot of field trips. We are going insane. Yeah. Yes. It is. But That's I exactly found a right. riverbend in Muhammad yeah. is actually like super dope. We're going to try to shoot a film there. It's Muhammad's no, pretty dope cool. just on the whole. We got a lot of goods. We got a lot of there. goods. <laughs> I'm a Muhammadite <laughs> right now. Yeah. I don't know what it is. Welcome. But, um, wow. Today, I don't know. <laughs> guys. <laughs> guys. <laughs> I mean, can I, do I just Mike, let this go? Michael is not. Michael is learned, not. You learn to deceive yourselves during <laughs> this pandemic. That's fine. Oh, we good. know where it's at. We know where it's at. <laughs> one, thing that, one thing that I want to talk about today. So. We're filming this on November 5th. And so we don't know who's president yet. It's things are going on. I feel like it's like, I'm like every day, I'm like super stressed for no apparent reason. No. <laughs> like it's crazy. But I think one of the things that I'm starting to see is there's a little bit of a div more of a divide than maybe we thought. And so our word for the year, I just keep coming back to is humility and unity. Mm -hmm. And I think unity is a misconception. I think you, in the sense of we think unity is we all believe the same. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I know and I'm proud of as our church, and I love being a part of it. I love saying like, this is one of our stances is the radical middle, which I also believe can get skewed. And we don't understand what that is. Maybe it's like, well, you can't make up your mind or maybe it's like, you just don't know. But I think the radical middle is actually one of the hardest places to stay in consistently. So the first question that I kind of want to get to you, you two is Leah is our executive and Mike is one of our senior pastors is in the midst of chaos. I am seeing unity go right out the window, mm -hmm. but can you first give us the definition of unity? What we mean by it, not just, we all believe the same because that's not the actual definition. Right. So whoever wants to do that definition of unity, and then just like what you're kind of seeing, how we can actually stay united in the midst of chaos. Cause yeah. even whoever becomes president, like it's not going to stop. Like yeah. we're still going to have things that we have to work through, navigate through. Right. So yeah, whoever wants to uh, unity, let's start I mean, there. I'll start and then you feel free to <laughs> jump right. in on anything. Um, you know, when we think about this idea of unity, I think you're right. You, you hinted at it a little bit. It's not about like, Oh, we all have to agree right. exactly the right. same. Uh, and you know, we, you talk, I think Julie actually gave, uh, was their sermon or maybe it was an MLP, I think it was talk, MLP. MLP talk about yeah. this idea. Uh, and we would look at it more on this idea of oneness, right? Oneness in the body of right. Christ. And when you look at it in the context of the way that the Bible describes the body of Christ, right? Yeah. It's all the different body parts, right? Each has its own function. Each has its own, mm. own, own reason for being, but separated. They're not helpful. Yeah. And, and, and they're, they're strange and they're, they're weird. You know, a hand separated from yeah. the body suddenly is like, Oh, that's kind of creepy. Yeah. But, my hand right here attached right. to the body is completely normal and right. functioning exactly as it should be and is yeah. expected to be. Yeah. Um, so that idea of, of oneness, what are we coming around? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That it's that person of Jesus, what he's done, how he's uniting right. the world unto himself. He's uniting his church together. He's yeah. uniting his people together. So when we talk about unity, it doesn't have mm -hmm. to mean agreement in all things, yeah. right? but we all are working towards the purpose of bringing the kingdom of God yeah. further yeah. Uh, of bringing light to the darkness right. of those places of doing that. So I, I think of it in the terms, an idea of this idea of oneness, not right. in this place of sameness or 
or agreement. Right. Totally. Yeah. What do you think, Bea? Yeah, I, I think, you know, diversity and unity is such a beautiful mm-hmm. thing. And I Which think... Which it almost sounds like a polar opposite, but they're no, not. No, it's so beautiful. I, I think about my family, you know, like yeah. God teaches us so much through just the, the family unit. Yeah. I think about how my kids and Ben and I are so very different but boy, are we unified yeah. and where I celebrate the difference. Like, I think this is what the invitation is from the father in this season is, is actually, I don't want everyone to be the same. Yeah. I don't want us all to look the same and mm-hmm. to do the same thing and to have the same passions. Yeah. We are all beautiful expressions of Christ in our own unique way. And so even like through politics and through all this, we, in, in every party, in every situation, mm-hmm. you can pull out the gold and you can see the goodness yeah. of God celebrated in very different ways. So even like thinking through my kids, like right. Cohen, like the way he sees the world is right. very different than Claire or Gia, but right. gosh, I love that he is the way that he is. He's yeah. soft-spoken and kind and he's smart and he's got mm-hmm. all these things. Gia is like firecracker, right. like literally fell off the bed the other day and goes, <laughs> wee. I was like, okay, like you love the adventure okay. of life. Yeah. Like you don't see that as pain. Yeah. You see that as like joy, yeah. like yeah. somehow, yeah. like the, 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 w- the things we bring into the world were very different, mm-hmm. but we are one, like we are all wingers. We are yeah. unified. And right. I think it's the same way in the body of Christ. We can all have a, bar right a, a mm-hmm. different expression of, of who God has made us to be, but yeah. we're still family. And if we can't celebrate the difference, we will implode. And yeah. so we got to keep celebrating the good. Yeah. I think so often just on that, it's yeah. this idea that beauty is found in contrast, right? Mm-hmm. Right. right. When we think of uh, of a beautiful landscape or a, a beautiful view or a yeah. beautiful painting, it's not because we're looking at a blank sheet of paper, right. or a singular monochromatic yeah. thing. It's generally this idea that there's contrasting yeah, geography, sure. pictures, colors. All those things come together, right. and, and there's beauty in those contrast. Right. Not necessarily looking at it and saying, right. "Oh, beauty is found in." completely pure, simple, right. one thing. Right. Mm-hmm. right. Again, there's beauty and simplicity as well, right. but we often find it in those places of contrast. Yeah. And I, I think one of the things that I'm, I'm kind of noticing and just having conversations with people outside of our church and other churches is like churches are becoming divided. Mm-hmm. Like you're really seeing like lines being drawn in churches, which is like exactly what you said. We should be unifying. We all have the same last name. Right. So we're good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like let's work everything else out together. What as church leaders, as both of you, I, I look at as people who really pour into my life and my leadership and, and becoming a, a husband and a father and a leader, like what would you say to some people or some churches that maybe are just struggling with like, guys, we are so divided. I think we're gonna have a church split. Mm-hmm. Like what are some, some leadership principles that maybe you can just say, you know, I've heard you Mike, say like, have really tough skin, but a really tender heart, mm-hmm. which goes against everything that everyone believes, I feel like. Mm-hmm. But like, what are some things that you guys could say and maybe just speak life in? Because I think we can look at the world and be like world problems. But for me, I'm like looking at the church and we're like, we have church problems. And if the world's really going to look at us, we've got to figure mm-hmm. out how to like live in unity. Mm-hmm. So what are some things that you guys could say in regarding to that? Well, I, I like, I would say, I I felt a lot of tension in the last Mm. few months, but I will say in the last few weeks, I have felt incredible peace. That's amazing. I I mean, really, truly. And we've heard a lot of, you know, feedback feedback or, or, you know, kind of polarizing things. But for for some reason, I feel like God is like just dropping peace into this church family. So, I mean, our, our church and then the broader church as a whole, like the truth is, we have to keep talking about what are the things that unify us? What is it that makes us family? Yeah. And again, it, we're going to have different opinions. That is life. Like the three of us don't have the same opinions about things like right. that. That's okay. Right. Like we, we can see the world in a different perspective just yeah. because of, you know, what God has shown right. each yeah. of us. But at the, at the end of the day, we all still sit at the table. And I think yeah. that the tension is to, you know, let me flip the table and run, right. like forget right. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, that's not going to be helpful. We want to keep coming to the table and having the discussion. And yeah. uh, even when we disagree to say, man, I honor you. I, I love yeah. that God has given you that perspective. Father, show me what I don't see. Like help, maybe there's parts of that that I need to, to learn yeah. for myself. And really that it's not, um, anger or hatred or bitterness, yeah. like where the enemy can take difference and just right. beat the church up or people yeah. in general. Like we don't want that to happen. Yeah. yeah. I think the, the challenge can be conflict is uncomfortable, right? Mm-hmm. Right. It just is. Yeah. There, there's just no getting around that. And so much of this season has been like, everything has been uncomfortable. I don't want yeah. more uncomfortable. Right. So I'm right. just going to, let me seek out that, which is comfortable, yeah. which can be that place of like, I'll just separate. And that's how I do it. Right. But God's always saying like, look, when you're in a, in a relationship struggle, like, well, what was the reason that brought you together in the first place? Yeah. Right. So what's that thing? What's your first love? Yeah. Right. How do we rally around who the person of Jesus is in the yeah. first place, who, mm-hmm. what he's done for us and not hide from those places of conflict mm-hmm. in there. Mm-hmm. And that 
we can have conflict. We can have yeah. healthy conflict as a family. Right. Like the family does not mean, yeah. oh, agreement in all things. Mm-hmm. I think any of right. us can look mm-hmm. at our family and go, hey, that's that's probably the opposite. <laughs> right. And many of you right now are probably dealing with that. Yeah. You know, when you have people who are on different sides of, of political lines or ideological mm-hmm. lines or, or causes, yeah. or whatever it is that they're passionate about, it's easy to, to bring conflict. Yeah. The reality is God's calling us to sharpen one another. Right. Right. You sharpen each other. Things are sharpened through friction. Right. Right. Like, right. And we have to do that in proximity. Yeah. And if the first place we want to do is to divide and isolate, mm-hmm. just know that generally that's the tactic of the enemy. Yeah. Right. That's yeah. the way he 100%. works. Divide, isolate, because yeah. when we pull apart, we're that much weaker. Yeah. We've, we've lost the strength that each other bring into those conversations and who mm-hmm. we are. And so can we look past those things? Can we look past that place of painting the other side right. as a monolithic right. thing? Right. You know, left and right and, right. and whatever it is that, that, yeah, the, yeah. The, that the conflict issue is, we paint them as this monolithic thing because now I right. can, it's easy to come against the them. Right. Right. Can I have a conversation first yeah. with an individual? Can I look at the relationships that I value right. deeply? People who've poured into my life that I yeah. don't necessarily agree with on everything, but what is the value that I can find out? Yeah. Like God's calling out the gold just right. as we do, is that we do in, as Christians, God's yeah. calling us to call out the gold of the world, to call them closer to him. So how can we yeah. do that by by introducing them to the very person? Yeah, and I Jesus think one of the things that, that you're, you both are kind of framing though is like, there's this idea that like, if we have conflict or feedback, it's negative. Mm -hmm. Somehow we've built this like conflict means negative or feedback means negative. But one thing that I hear from both of you, like, like probably subliminally is like confidence in your identity as a leader. Mm -hmm. I think so often if we have to tell someone I'm confident in my identity, you're probably really not. Mm -hmm. And like, that's just, you just told everyone you're not. (laughs) But I think that's a thing that I'm, I'm seeing is a lot of leaders are, are no longer confident in their identity. Like it's like, Mm -hmm. because of the pandemic that they didn't have answers Mm -hmm. for this. It's like, oh no, I'm not as good a Christian or I'm not as good as a son. Like, what are some things that you guys do um, to remind yourself of your identity so you, you're not in, caught in those situations of like, if I give Leah feedback, you're not like, well, he hates me. Totally. Or like, if there's conflict, like, well, I'm just not a good leader anymore. Mm-hmm. Like, what are some things that you guys do to kind of keep that going of like, no, I, I am confident as a leader. God has designed me to do this. He's called me to do this. So what are some things that you guys do to kind of stir that up? Cause I think a lot of people are feeling like, dang, I don't know what I'm doing. Right. And so well, I might not be the right person. I think, you know, you, you said it a little bit too, with those guiding words that we felt like God had given us at the beginning yeah. of this year as a church was this idea of humility and unity. I've been holding on to those this whole year. So come back, <laughs> if you come back to that place of humility, if I can live in a place that recognizes, mm-hmm. I don't actually, my job is not to have all the answers. Right. And that right there, I feel like is critical though, as a leader, being able to say that and I don't say, have I all don't the know. answers. You know? I'm willing to go on a journey to find some answers with mm-hmm. you, Yeah, but I may not have the answers to all of your questions. Right. I, I, I'm always learning and growing and I always want to be, if I ever, if I arrive at a place where I think that I know all of the answers, yeah. somebody should probably quickly tackle me and get me out of the room <laughs> because <laughs> yeah, the that's room. a bad place to be in right. as a leader. If you think yeah. you've arrived, that's trouble. Yeah. And so I think if I can live from that place first, I don't actually have to have all the answers. Right. And, I, and, I, and I've struggled like this isn't like, oh man, I've, I've got that all figured out. There's right. often like, I should know this answer. I should know how to. Yeah. Well, God's like, no, no, walk with me. Let's walk alongside this person. Yeah. One, make sure the question you're answering is actually the one that needs to be answered. Because right. often in conflict, there's so much more behind, behind, the, behind the surface. What, especially you, what, you, what I hear all, say all the time, the issue is never the that, issue, Samuel. So true. That is <laughs> so, so true. true. <laughs> yeah, you know, I love conflict, so this is hard for me. Because <laughs> I know, right? I'm the same. Conflict We're means intimacy. We're both if you know anything <laughs> right. about the Enneagram. <laughs> we love... Uh, it, we thrive in it. <laughs> it it's right. intimacy. We get to actually, yeah. we get to know each other better through conflict yeah. because what happens is you're kind of, uh, you're bringing things to the surface that you might otherwise keep right. to yourself. So yeah. anytime there's conflict, my heart does a little skip of a beat. Cause it's like, yeah. <gasps> we're going to, we're going to get to know each other yeah, better. I'm right. so excited. I'm going to get to know more of who you are and who God's yeah. made you to be. Um, ultimately, you know, in those moments, you just have to remember people are doing the best they can. And so yeah. when people come at you, sometimes they're coming at you personally, it feels like a personal attack. Yeah. Every time. And this is why I, I need Holy Spirit's lens to say, yeah. show me what I don't see. Right. Because where it can feel like, oh, this is a personal attack on my life and my character right. and my leadership. Yeah, you just peel it away. And I, sometimes yeah. there's great feedback and you need yeah. to receive it. And I, sometimes I'm, it hurts. And yeah, you be like, and, and you're right. Your perspective <laughs> has is greatly valuable to me. Thank yeah. you. Um, but oftentimes it's kind of muddled in with everyone's own personal journey that yeah. kind of you become the place that they, they um, spread yeah. their 
love. Yeah. Uh, so, but all this to say, like, no matter what, like when I think about confidence, like where, if I know I'm struggling in self-confidence is when I struggle to celebrate someone else. And so it's a really good indicator. Like if I can't say really good things about every like person that, around Rich? me, Rich? I look over then, Rich is like, yeah, oh. because that actually is like, uh, if it's too hard for me to call out the gold and say something amazing right. about wow. you, I'm yeah. actually struggling in, in my own identity. And so father, like, again, it's family. Yeah. I would never look at my kids and like, not be able to celebrate right. them. Right. They're my, oh, I love right. how God made them. My perspective yeah. is so different. Same thing with teams you you lead, people that you work with. Like, so if you're, and it would be a perspective change, Father, I need to see what you see. Yeah. Because right now I'm struggling in my own stuff. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, and I think that, that too, that understanding that different personalities yeah. do have a, can't totally. about it differently. Right. Some of the conflict is, is a place of drawing closer together and others conflict yeah. is a major divider. Distance, yeah. And what is it that, that you're bringing? I've heard you talk about this a lot, Lee, and I, and I think you're gonna talk about it some more soon. This idea of what am I carrying mm-hmm. into it, right? Is, is who am I? Yeah. What am I carrying into it? Positionally, uh, spiritual authority, yeah. natural authority, and all that, those things that play is into that people it. don't even know about though. Like what no. you carry into conversation. She's taught me so much about that. Like, yeah. Hey bro, when you walk in the room, you are carrying that. I'm like, Oh crap. Like I need yeah. to, I need to come in like low. You're, like you're affecting everybody around yeah. you yeah. in that place. And when you're looking for conflict, one, two in a healthy conflict, it's looking for looking for a resolution to bring there us closer is. together yeah. to protect relationships. Relationship. Yeah. There you go. If we're there to protect relationship, yeah. that can be a healthy conflict. If you're there to air your issues and validate right. your your hurt and your yeah. and your pain right. yep. so that you can feel better about having held it in the first yeah. place. Right. You're not actually there for the right reasons. Yeah. Right. My dad you're was, there just to, you're there for yourself and it's a selfish thing. Yeah. If you're there and saying, Hey, I'm here to seek resolution in this yeah. and understanding I might be writing a story in my own right. head. That's not, not good. So those are always things to be thinking about. Right. But if we can focus on the first thing I'm going to do is I want to, if I'm having a conflict with Leah, the mm-hmm. first thing is like, I want to protect relationship right. and right. connection yeah. that we've built first and foremost mm-hmm. above being right above right. getting my argument heard. Right. Can I protect that relationship in that place first? If we can yeah. come at it with those, that mindset, yeah. we can get a lot further. Yeah. Mm-hmm. My dad would say something in high school. He'd say, son, if you come to the table with a problem, come with three solutions. Yeah. Yeah. And like most people come to the table to expose a problem with no solution. Right. And so the idea that you're getting at, and I hear you both say is when you have those conversations or conflict, the goal is not to be right. It's to be close. It's like, can I leave the room being closer to you during this conflict mm-hmm. than not? And one of the things that I'm, I'm, I'm watching and observing both of you is um, you became an exec pastor in the middle of a pandemic, essentially, like the pandemic hit and you became a senior pastor and the pandemic hit. Are Those you blaming are, us? I mean, <laughs> is this some kind of a blame? I, I, I feel coincidence. I, feel I think not. <laughs> I still blame Putty. <laughs> Putty did say I still yeah, need a public blaming. apology. That's right. <laughs> um, but so you guys both kind of Lord kind of moved you into more of not like a, a job's better than the other, but like he's leading you to more. We have more influence and more say and more, you know, mm-hmm. in things. And I think it's easy to be like, oh, well, you guys have been doing this for so long. It's you guys got this. But you stepped into new roles mm-hmm. and then a pandemic hit. Mm-hmm. And so it's not like you guys were like, by the way, Mike, the pandemic's going to hit in 2020, Leah, pandemic 2020. Mm-hmm. Here's the steps we're going to take. We had it all planned out. Mm-hmm. So I know we're, we're chilling. I'm kidding. <laughs> but like, so some of the things that I've seen you guys do though, is like publicly admit, we don't know what we're doing right now and we're going to figure it out. Why, why do that? Like, why, why not just tell your stuff, but you've, you've let other people like, Hey guys, we're trying to figure this out. We don't have all the answers. Why is that important for a lot of leaders to not just like tell their leadership team, Hey guys, we don't know what, what we're doing, but like, like people that I'm leading underneath the leaders that I'm leading, we don't know what we're doing. Why is that important? It's not saying that like, you don't know, have a clue of what's going on, but you're going like, yeah. we don't know the right steps. Why is that important as a leader? Like to say like, Hey, we don't know what we're doing. I, don't know. I, th- I think that's the humility piece that just says, you know what? even if we don't have all the answers, we know the one who does. Yeah. And so our job as it, I mean, yes, it's a job, but this is, this is a calling. This is a, right. a relationship mm-hmm. with the father. Mm-hmm. And what we have to give to you is the same peace that Holy spirit gives to us. Yeah. Doesn't peace doesn't come from having all the information. Mm-hmm. And this is hard for people. People right. think, well, if I have all the information, that means I'm in control. I know what's next. Right. If I read these three books, there you go. And it's just never been the case. I don't have all the information, yeah. but I have the one who knows all. Yeah. And so, as we lead, you're right. When we say we don't, we don't know, 
We, we literally we're, don't. <laughs> we literally mean that. <laughs> but, but the truth is we don't have to. The, yeah. the beautiful thing about following Jesus is it's a relationship. It's a, yeah. it's a, it's a personal step-by-step journey with him. And if yeah. we can do anything, what we want to do is point you in that relationship with him too. Because yeah. even if you don't have all the answers, you know, the one who does, right. and he's going to lead you and he's going to guide you. It's, it's actually, to me, it's the healthiest place to be in so many ways. Cause the minute I think I got it. Yeah. Woo. Like it, it, it yeah. can just be really, and I'm not saying don't have confidence when, yeah. you, when the Holy Spirit's told you something but or, you know, but I think the confidence though is saying like, we don't know. Like it's not being like, well, we've got these 14 plans in play. It's like, right. no, you don't like you're, right. you don't know just as much as we do. And that's the confidence though. It's like, I'm confident enough to say, I don't know. Right. Yeah. But I will, I will also say when Holy Spirit tells you to do something, you better do it. You better do it. Cause Amen he knows. So like the only thing I know is to do the last thing he asked me to do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's a pretty good place to be. Yeah, And I think that's that bar and a half, I don't know. doesn't mean, <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't mean inaction. I know that was that's right. Right. moving. And that's huge. That's and huge. so I think that that can be, clear is that I don't know exactly what this is going to look like. Yeah. You know, we've talked about not being able to feel like we can plan out right. more than like four to five weeks at a time. Right. At best. Or and, and that feels so stretch <laughs> at times. And sometimes it's week to week. Right. Uh, it doesn't mean we have no plans to continue to move forward. Right. It means right. that it just means I have to lean really heavy on that Holy spirit. Piece. Yeah. Really lean heavy on, I gotta lean into Jesus right now. Right. But here's what we're going to try. Right. Yeah. And we're going to do the very best that we can continuing right. to follow the last yeah. instructions that God gave until we have something that changes that. Yeah. And so uh, that's, that is a place that that's hard mm-hmm. to, to live and say, Hey, I don't know, but it doesn't mean that, that God doesn't giving us yeah. ideas or things right. that we can try. Yeah. Um, but again, I don't have to have all the answers. Right. It's that place. And this, this other thing that I think is so important to you asked about, well, why would we share that? We, we talk about our four core values, yep. you know, the supernatural breakthrough mm-hmm. and excellence, missional leadership. Which if you don't have those as uh, a church, those are critical uh, to have. I <laughs> tribe or Something family. like that. Mm-hmm. It, it, anyway, core those values. are those. Four, we, we have to talk about the unspoken core value of yeah. authenticity. Right. right. And, and that, that is a vineyard value. And I think that's a yeah. vineyard movement value. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I know it's a value here. Yep. And if we're leading inauthentically, mm-hmm. it is quickly going to lead into, into authentic yeah. relationships, connections, decisions mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. aren't going to feel good. I don't want to live in a place that's at conflict with a value yeah. of who we are. Yeah. And so mm-hmm. I want to lead authentically the people we're at. Now, again, there's things that we don't, you don't have to be, oh, I have to share every piece of every information and every detail with every person that I come across. Nobody yeah. does that because that's not healthy for anybody. Yeah. <laughs> but I do want to lead authentically. Yeah. And when I'm in that place, speak authentically to those who are following. Yeah. yeah. Okay. One, I just did a message with our youth ministry last night called Leaders Lean. Mm-hmm. And I talked about like, my main point was whatever you lean in, you reveal. So like, Mm -hmm. if I lean into myself, I reveal who I really am. If I lean into Jesus, I reveal who he is. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I think is easy to do is to lean into self. Cause I like, like that's the thing you're certain of, right? You're like, I know, I know myself. Mm. What is, and Leah's like, oh. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) What are some things I, or maybe just talk about that. Like being, leaning into Jesus, but also I feel like it's easier to lean into yourself when obviously it's not what we want to do. What are your thoughts? I said that and well, you had, you had no, thoughts like, automatically. <laughs> the, here's the truth. We don't actually know us. Right. And this, okay. We think we do. We've taken yeah. all the tests. We've done all the things. We've got every personality test locked which in. Which I love. I want to be clear. I do love those things. <laughs> the one who knows us better than anyone mm. is the father. And yeah. I, again, I, not to talk about my kids again, but I, I, you see so much of the heart of the father revealed through mm-hmm. having, mm-hmm. having kids. I, I can agree. look at my daughter. She's freaking out on the floor. I'm like, oh, honey, you're tired. No, yeah. I'm not. I'm hungry. No, you're not. You're exhausted. Yeah. It's time to go to bed. Yeah. You, you, the problem is when we have the feels, we have the feelings. Mm-hmm. It really limits our perspective because we don't actually know. And yeah. fe- I mean, I've talked about this yeah. before, feels but your feelings indicators. lie. Yeah. They, they, they can indicate that something's off, but they can lie to you. And you can believe that yep. a feeling is saying that, oh, so you must do this. There are a lot of feelings right now. I agree. A lot of feelings from a lot of people. And your feelings are valid. But sometimes, like, we can't actually let those feelings be the things that drive our decisions. Yeah, they can't dictate what we do. They, they just can't. And so I think in this season specifically, where feelings are really high, yeah. we have to say, Father, can you give me your perspective? Yeah. What do I not see in this Ooh, moment right good. now? I think I'm hungry. Mm-hmm. Really, I probably just need a nap. Yeah. So, like, I'm feeling things. Something feels yeah. off, but help me make the best decision for others. Yeah. So I would say, yes, we know, we know us, yeah. but father knows us so much better. But I think it's cool. Uh, what you just said, there's like the, I'm going to use like the, I need a nap versus eat. Like 
eat, I hear, but I need to work. And the father's like, you need to rest. Mm, yeah, that's good. Like, yeah, yeah. like I want to stand up and go fight for you. No, I need you to sit right. for a moment. Right. But I think that's the thing is like being able to hear the voice of the father and being like, okay, I feel like I want to go do stuff. Mm -hmm. Do you need me to? Mm -hmm. Cause he might not need you to, he right. might need you just to sit rest. down and enjoy him while he does mm -hmm. everything else for you. You know, I, I think I often, for me, I have to flip the script Yeah, and it's instead of saying, Hey, am I going to go lean into Jesus? Am I yeah. going to let him lean into me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because it's, it's letting him lean in mm -hmm. so he can access some things that need to not be there right? Mm -hmm. or that need to be shifted and changed. Some yeah. perspectives that need to change mm -hmm. some heart perspective yeah. that might need to change some emotions mm -hmm. that might be yeah. having authority that they don't That's need good. to have. Yeah. And so sometimes it's just stop. Like yeah. you said, and instead of me saying, okay, what am I going to do? What am I going to go accomplish? It's not yeah. about me. Mm -hmm. It's about saying, Jesus, can you lean into me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm letting you lean. I'm surrendering. Mm -hmm. And it's in that place he can reveal. Yeah. As he leans into us, yeah. he reveals who we are through right. him. That's good. And, and, and just as we lean into him, we're yeah. revealing more of him. Yeah. When he leans into us, he's revealing more of who he says, of his of yeah. the identity good, he's bro. given us good, that pushes out those places where we're letting <clears throat> outside emotion yeah. outside mm -hmm. things have authority yeah, in that place. Well, and things too, like in this election season, there's going to be a lot of feelings yeah. about who eventually does win. Yeah. Right. And, and, and for good reason yeah. on both sides, there are some very valid reasons we are going to feel some things. The question is, are we supposed like, how do we trust that Holy spirit still has good plans yeah. for this country, for our communities? Right. How do we trust that he's still moving mm -hmm. and using his kids right. in the world to right. do good and release good wherever we go. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it's just, um, I think where the feelings can come in and we think, oh gosh, but, but it's, it's going to be, it's, it's going to blow up. Yeah. Look back. What is God's track record? Yeah. Faithful, good, yep. kind, trustworthy. provisionary, trustworthy. Yeah. You guys, it's who he is. So the minute we start to feel like this, yeah. that's the enemy. We don't right. <laughs> like being anxious, filled with worry, yeah. any, any of that, right. not kingdom, let it go. Mm -hmm. And again, it doesn't mean don't feel the feels you can feel the feel, mm -hmm. but just don't let that actually it, like wash over you where that yeah. becomes your next step. Like we actually need to come back. No, 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 no. Yeah. This is who Jesus is. Yeah. And this is actually what unifies us. Yeah. We're unified mm -hmm. in who he is that's and good. what he's done. That's yeah, we, we can't let the season is let so many things try to have authority over who right. we are. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. This is authority over my emotions, authority right. of what I feel from wh whether it's politics or cause mm -hmm. or, or what name the issue of yeah. the day. Those yeah. things, as soon as they start to drive my emotions, right. when I'm, if I, if I get on social media, did yeah. I learn something this year? Actually, you asked me at the beginning, did I learned something. Yeah. I learned to just ignore a lot of things <laughs> Yeah, yeah. that, that I true. had to ignore because otherwise I was letting them they seep, speak into, speak yeah. into and seep into. And as soon as I found myself in that place of anxiety and turmoil and, ah, uh, heaviness yeah god is that was that you right mm -hmm. are you teaching me this or am i just let, did i just let something else have authority right. in my life i let those things start to dictate yeah and so where can we when we're feeling those things it's just let jesus lean in yeah mm -hmm. let him push away all those things anything that's coming between you mm. and 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 mm. jesus and letting jesus have authority over those things yeah that's idolatry yeah yeah and so good. it doesn't matter whether it's the politics or the cause or whatever wow, that's good. it's idolatry because yeah. those are things that are having authority in your life before jesus has authority right. in your life mm -hmm. right jesus that's ability so good, the, the kingdom's ability to move in our world yeah. is not dictated on one election. Yeah. Right. Well, tactics maybe have to change. Well, other things right. change, sure. But God's power is not suddenly this, limited by man's choice. Yeah. This feels like a candy shop, just bars everywhere. <laughs> this, is, this is obnoxious. Um, the last thing I kind of want to cover topic is the, this idea of honor as a leader. Mm -hmm. I think um, I read a book called Honor's Reward by John Revere and really opened, some, opened my eyes to like, there's places I'm not honoring that I think I am um, when it comes to outside of the church. Mm -hmm. um, but Mike, there was something that you said a few weeks ago, you said there's honor because the person's authority over you, but then there's active honor where you're actively honoring them. Not just being like, I'll honor you because you're my boss. Mm -hmm. It's like, I'm honoring you because I see Jesus in you. And so mm -hmm. I'm honoring you. I feel like there's not a lot of honor <laughs> happening right mm -hmm. now. Like, I think it's so easy to dishonor and like, to be completely honest, like the thing that the Lord has been jacking me up about is I don't want to hear you say anything negative about any candidate. I was like, uh, okay. And I felt like he was like, I am going to use e either one. I could use either mm -hmm. one. And like, that might be hard for people to hear, but I literally felt like there was like, I could use either one. You don't know. And so it's like realizing like, dang, like Lord, like I'm, every time I talk bad about one of them, I'm dishonoring you. That's right. 
And that, that honestly kind of like stabbed me in the heart. I was like, dang. And it, what rang in my head was you saying like actively honoring though. Mm -hmm. Like, are you actively honoring, shutting down negative conversations, shutting down, you know, so in a season as leaders, I think it's easy to have opinions, easy to have our own thought process, but I think honor is something we can't let go of. Mm -hmm. So could you both just speak into like active honoring, like what that looks like, the importance of it, the why behind it. I just really want to get in that, that part of this leadership part is like just the honor part. I think it's so mm -hmm. huge. Yeah. I think, and I think that, you know, just defining the honor. What is yeah. that honor piece? The honor piece again, doesn't mean that I'm, I have to honor everything yeah. good or bad. Yeah. Like that, that's not, that's not right. it's like, well, I have to pick something that's, that right. goes against my right. moral code or right. beliefs or Christian beliefs. I have to honor it because that's what I'm called to do. Right. But honoring means I can enter that conversation yeah. looking to pull out the gold yep. and not to, Expose not to call dirt. that person out. Yeah. We, wait, we call it, right, we say it all the yeah. time. Don't, we're not calling out, we're calling up. Yep. So honor means I'm going to step into that conversation looking, how can I actually bring, protect the relationship Yeah. and how can I call up towards yeah. Jesus? When I'm calling up, I'm not just saying, good. Hey, I'm, I'm putting you on a pedestal. Right. I, I want to call you up towards the person of Jesus, towards yeah. the father's heart, mm -hmm. because that's where your life can be changed. Right. That's where my life can be changed yeah. and was changed. So I want that for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How can I walk into a conversation? How can I walk into a uh, topic about something that's, that's very controversial? I can have an opinion. Yeah. I can even have a different opinion than you, but it doesn't mean that I have to dishonor. Right. And I think what so much of this, this whole political season has felt like is just this place of like the way that I get where I want yeah. is to condemn, to disparage, yeah. to, to say negative other. things, to dishonor. Yeah. And so <clears throat> when we align ourselves with those things, those things mm -hmm. begin to have authority. Yeah. And now we see those things on both sides, rocketing back and forth. Yeah. They're just mimicking those things. Right which they're seeing demonstrated. Yeah. So as leaders, we, we need to learn how to honor well. So those that we're leading learn how mm -hmm. to honor well and show That's that. Good. So, yeah, I, I feel like I've learned a lot about honor. Um, honor is really where you, where you are recognizing the value mm. in the other person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think for me, you know, I've shared this before, but so much of how I learned to honor was actually through my mom and her, her death actually. Yeah. And so like where, the, where this hurts is I kind of learned this lesson too late in yeah. some ways with her, but the father told me like over and over, like you can still honor like yeah. your mom. Yeah. And so like just my journey with her, just a snapshot of it was, you know, it was really hard. Like, addiction, divorce, lots of different relationships. Um, yeah. we, we had a, a very tumultuous relationship and I, I would always like slander. Yeah. Oh, can you believe she did this? Right. Oh, her behavior. Oh, yeah. gonna... And like when the father changes your perspective on people, like mm -hmm. shoot, dang it. <laughs> We're just looking at each other. We're fine. We're just me and you here, Leah. <laughs> it's That's her good. birthday today. Yeah, so I'm like extra sensitive. I know. I'm, I'm like so sitting sorry. over here trying not to cry. That's really Gosh, good. Dang it. You're doing it. This is amazing. What the father taught me was when you see what he sees, mm -hmm. all you can do is honor. Yeah. It's so good. And it's never about That's behavior. Good. Like this is actually what Jesus died for you guys. Yeah. He died for every person so that they could be everything he made them to be. Mm -hmm. And when I think about like this was obviously after her death, she died from a drug overdose. Like this was not a pretty yeah. situation. But what I see now is like, what does the father see in mm -hmm. her? What does the father celebrate about her? She is fully now everything God made her to be. And yeah. when you when you can see every person, who is it, Father? Mm -hmm. That that you, like, how are they? Everything you've made them to be. Yeah. And that's, that's what we see. So easy to call out the gold. So yeah. easy to honor. So wow. easy. Like, oh, I celebrate this. And I love that you made them this way. And I love that, you know, that they have um, this perspective on life. Mm -hmm. And so to me, it was such a game changer because yeah. I, instead of focusing on behavior, which I look, it's very hard to ignore behavior. I understand right. that. I'm not, We've I'm a person. Toddlers. Exactly. <laughs> I'm a person, but you look, it's like you look past the behavior and yeah. you see who they actually are because behavior is so layered. People mm -hmm. have behavior issues for whatever reasons. They're right. tired. They're hungry. They're you know, right, right. like all of us. But if you get past that and you look at who they are and who they are forever, yeah. That's what we're celebrating. And so when I think of honor, like it is so, it so doesn't have to be situational. Yeah. It's not like, well, you did this thing to me. And so now I can't. And I, like, let me say, there are so many different weighted situations where there's, yeah. it is incredible pain. And I'm not ignoring that or saying that that's not, yeah. but I'm saying the father can redeem any situation. This yeah. is what makes it supernatural. This yeah. is what makes it 
it, you know, this is why it's such a joy, but this is the kingdom. Like when we talk about people, mm-hmm. we should only be celebrating the things that God celebrates in them. Yeah. When we, when we think about people and even if we don't agree with them, welcome to life. Like we don't yeah. all agree on a lot of things. And yeah. even if it's a terrible thing that they agree with that mm-hmm. you don't agree with father, help me have your perspective on that person. Yeah. And that is what we, that's what changes the game. That's how we honor. Yeah. yeah I think that, it's so good. That is, uh, yeah, no. There's a lot to unpack. <laughs> and if, you, if you're watching or listening, you probably should rewind and listen to that section no, right there. It, for real. One like, more time. There's some things but. that you just said that like, I think we assume we do, mm. but your yeah. words say different. Mm-hmm. You know, your yeah. actions say different. And I think there's so many families that I've, that I've talked to, people that I've talked to that in their families right now, they're dealing with this place yeah. of yeah. division and hurt. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or it's, it's coworkers or friends and relationships that are, that are honestly in like, I don't know how I could be friends with them. Yeah. Right. And, and I think the, the lie of honor is that honor requires the other person yeah. to, to, to be nice to me and right. do good right. things to me. And then or I'll to honor change. You. That's right. easy. It's right. always, Jesus says that, right? It's, it's yeah. easy to honor those yeah. who are your friend, those who honor, who do say mm-hmm. nice things and do good things to you. Yeah. It's really hard when they feel like you're in conflict yeah. with right. them. My honor is not dependent upon somebody else. Yeah. Right. See, my honor is, has mm-hmm. to be rooted in the person of Jesus and yeah. in his heart. Yeah. And from that place, I can, I can learn to honor yeah. and call out the gold, even when they are saying things that are yeah. unkind or hurtful or, or divisive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's not me. See, right. I don't have to take offense. Right. right. I, I have to, I, I, that's key, that's though, it, right? I don't have Daniel to Daniel Goulet, he made this so famous yeah. like three years ago. He did a sermon. He's like, we've talked about it over and over. He's like, yeah. would you like to take offense? Cause I have to take the offense. Right. Right. It's an it's active choice. choice. Yeah. It's yeah. an active choice to take an offense. It's an active choice to stay in honor wow. right. yeah. in the same place. So good. Right. So I have to stay in that place where I'm going to, this is who I am. Yeah. yeah. Jesus. Yep. I'm leaning into Jesus. He's leaning into me. He says yeah. who I am. Yeah. yeah. yeah their opinion doesn't change that. That's right. Yeah. It doesn't change how I behave towards them. That's, that's right. That's love. And that's mm-hmm. honor walking that out. That's so good. And so it doesn't mean that everybody has the same access to you Yeah. as not everybody has the same access as my wife or my family that's or my right. closest friends. Yeah. Uh, and so those are all different things. Those are, those are, those are different. It doesn't right. mean like, Oh, I have to let everybody in my life at the friend same level. Yeah. It doesn't have to right. make that. It doesn't have to be that, but I can choose yep. how I interact mm-hmm. with. Yeah. And especially when it's family, mm-hmm. like family doesn't just go away. That's right. You know, like, they, right. and it shouldn't just go away. Right. Like, I know that's not always the case, but it shouldn't. Yeah. So, how can we choose right. to say to do things now? Right. So good. Maybe the bridge will take two years to build. Yeah. Start laying some foundation mm-hmm. now right. for what might yeah. be two years from so now. Good. It may take some time to get there, but don't let anything you're doing now make that gap. That's wider. right. And yeah. and honestly, this is what changes the world. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What, what if all people who said, I love Jesus right. could actually do this and honor people well, even through disagreement like yeah. that, that's a game changer. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. All this is, again, you, you love the picture of what God does. Like he calls us to be a generous people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. I don't have a poverty mindset with learning how to honor. I need right. to have a generous mindset mm-hmm. wow. in that place. So my generous mindset okay, Mike, plays out in everything that I do. It's okay, Michael. There you go. Michael Dean. Who I am. Michael Dean, let's God go. makes yeah. me into this place and he teaches me all these lessons along the way. Yeah. And all of them come into play. Yeah. I don't get to have, oh, I'm such a generous person over here. Right. But right. I'm behaving like a pauper. Yeah. With right. how I call out the gold. Wow. Mm-hmm. Then I'm only a little generous. Yeah, our production right. team just I'm yeah. partly yeah. there. That moment. That's not who I am. I, when I'm generous, I'm generous. That's, that's a part right. of that's part of God's made me to be. I give away of who I am. Yep. Yeah. In that place. And if who I am is generous, then who I am is generous with honor. Mm-hmm. So good. I was going to say, could you just leave us with 30 seconds of go. wisdom, but not anymore. <laughs> um, could you guys actually just pray over mm-hmm. everyone watching? We don't know when people watch us or the date mm-hmm. or the time or the season or the year, but I believe that whatever we pray into the spirit world, if you need to hear it a year later, the Lord will bring fruit like that. <laughs> so um, would you, whoever wants to start, it's up to you guys. Yeah, I actually, I, I want to, I want to cover something. We, we talked about the beginning because you talked about this idea of the radical middle yeah. oh, at yeah. the beginning. And I, wanna, I do want to pray oh, yeah, that yeah, yeah. because I don't want to leave people place like, well, we right. never talked about that. Right. We didn't get there. You know, very, just, just, just to try and sum it up quickly, you know, in the vineyard, this is one of those mm-hmm. famous phrase. And, and there was a guy named Bill Jackson actually wrote yeah. a book right. called the quest yeah. for the radical middle. Great and, and it was, it was tied a lot to this idea of the vineyard movements, like desire to live in this place between kind of this mm-hmm. evangelical Bible focus yeah. and this Pentecostal spirit focus yeah. and living somewhere in the middle right. and, and where that plays out because all these things we've been talking about. So play out in that place. It doesn't mean living here. It doesn't mean people don't have an opinion or yeah. have individual choices, right. but I live in a place here where I can still speak and into call both. up into both sides. Yep. 
Yep. I, I can scroll up and down my Facebook page over the last two days and see all people from our church, yeah. from my church, all with vastly different mm-hmm. views yeah. about what's happening right mm-hmm. now. Yeah. And that's okay. Yep. I want to live in a place where I can still have and protect relationship and connection yeah, to right. them. It doesn't mean I didn't, and I, I'm undecided about which side. If I choose this side, I'm losing voice mm-hmm. right. here. Yeah. So I'm choosing Mm-hmm. to live here and it's uncomfortable yeah. because yeah, of that. We're choosing to live in tension and yeah. that yeah. doesn't feel good. And people don't ever want to choose tension. Yeah. They want to choose comfortability. It's more comfortable yeah. if I stay here or stay here. But, mm-hmm. and this is the hardest part of leadership, vineyard leadership for us, yeah. is that we choose to remain in that tension choice. even when it's hard, yep. even when it's uncomfortable, yeah. even when we feel pulled like 14 million ways because we do, but it, it is the place I choose yeah. to be because I yeah. think that's where Jesus mm-hmm. sits. I think he's in that place. Yeah, I just shared with Mike this morning, Joshua five and the angel of the Lord appears to Joshua and Joshua's like, who are you here for us or for our enemies? And the angel of the Lord responds, neither. I'm the army, I'm the commander of the army of the Lord. And Joshua falls to his mm-hmm. face and he says, so what are we supposed to do? He says, don't worry about it. Take off your shoes, it's holy ground. Mm-hmm. The middle is so holy that mm-hmm. I think it makes you uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Cause you're like, um, I'm here with Jesus now mm-hmm. like, yeah. Yeah. and I'm in this tension. So yeah. I think we should do a podcast about the radical middle. We, we probably need to. I just want to make know, sure you yeah, mentioned you the beginning yeah, I and no, I wanted to no, make sure I, we I want to do one about it. Cause I think it's way more in depth yeah. than just a quote of it like, is. Oh yeah. We're in the radical middle. I'm no. like, okay, but that means like you actually have to listen to both yeah. sides. And yeah. read that book. If you have questions, cause <laughs> I it's, it's very I good. And I think it will be good. I think, you know, if we, we're talking about leadership, the best leaders I've learned from didn't tell me what to think. That's right. right. They actually helped me learn how, how to think. think. I was going to say the biggest thing and, that and I think Erwin McManus says is if I can get you to think I've won. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm like, that's amazing. Like yeah. that's the goal is to get you to think. Yeah. And that, and that's all we're saying. It doesn't mean that individually we don't right. make choices. Right. Yeah. Individually we don't, you know, right. Right. we don't make, have we, we do our votes or have opinion, yeah. whatever. All those things are true. But I live in a place mm-hmm. that lets me still continue to speak life and love and honor. Yeah, in that so place. good. And so that was your thirty-second yeah. wisdom. So there you boom. Go. We'll get out. You, um, you wanna, we're gonna pray. Yeah, we're supposed you, to yeah, pray. Yeah, I, I just you just pray over way. over yeah. people? Like I said, yeah. I, do you I think start? Sure. We don't we don't yeah. know when people are listening. And yeah, it'd be beneficial. So. You bet. Well, Father, we love you, and we thank you that you uh, love us more than we could even imagine, and you love uh, the the places we live. You love our country. You love our families. You love our church. Um, you love that's who you are and what we are saying today is we want to be just like you and so father we just ask right now for your perspective Mm -hmm. on our current situation Mm. father we ask that you would show us what we don't see let our perspective come into alignment with your perspective and father i just i just speak your peace right now over every listener that your peace would flood their hearts their minds their homes uh, their work that that it is a joy to live in your world it is a joy and we get to be carriers of your presence, carriers of your peace. That's what we bring into every single moment. And so father, we just ask right now for that peace to be released into the world through every listener right now. Mm. Amen. Well, fathers, I do, uh, just as Leah said, I thank you. I thank you for mm-hmm. the opportunity and time in which we live. Yeah. And that, and then that can feel like, oh man, why? I'm not sure I'm thankful, but God, I'm thankful because you're here. Mm-hmm. I'm thankful because you're still here encountering us and, and allowing us to experience your presence wherever we go. Mm-hmm. And so God, we do, we speak right now where, where division or anxiety or fear are trying to overtake uh, our, our country, our families, our relationships, our connections. God, we just speak right now. Would you let your spirit of peace just reign? Mm-hmm. God, I just, th- you, you, you showed me that, that verse earlier this week when I woke up mm-hmm. on election day, just be still and know that I am God. Lord, I pray that we would be a people who know when it's time to be still and understand who you are, mm-hmm. to lean into you as you lean into us. God, we thank you. We thank you that you love this country, you love your church, you love the world. God, you loved it so much that you that made the ultimate sacrifice to reconcile it to you. Mm-hmm. And so God, we speak now just reconciliation and, and peace and connection, God, that is focused around you. Let a revival mm-hmm. of who you are come to our nation and to our world and to each individual who is listening, and even those who aren't. God, we thank you for your power in Jesus' name. Mm-hmm. Amen. 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 Yeah. So Amen. good. We're going to play a quick five for five. Oh, yeah, five for five. So, I forgot. About it. I didn't know if we were going to do that this time. Oh, oh, right. oh okay. we're doing this, all Michael right. Dean. All right. Let's, wow. All right. All right Mr. First, Dean. first word, Dean. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing people. <laughs> um, first word is going to be kids. Kids. Learning. Okay. 
Leah's like, it's I'm been a hard week. Rethinking. Um, <laughs> I choose joy. <laughs> See my active choice here? Yeah. Choose joy. Something tells me it wasn't the first word. I'll allow it. I'll allow it. Uh, number two is going to be Starbucks. Uh, blonde roast. Okay. Um, Americano, yeah. Grande Blonde Americano, the thing G- I drank this morning. G- GBA. <laughs> okay. um, GBA. Fashion. Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes. Uh, I love it. <laughs> Sometimes. Creative. Creative. Okay. Um, leadership. Fun, actually. Okay. Yeah. Necessary. Mm-hmm. Necessary. Gotcha. The last thing is going to be the Vineyard Church of Central Illinois. Family. Family. Wow. It's family. Sure. family. I love it. I love you guys. Thanks yeah. for being here. Yeah. Hey, if you guys enjoyed it, please go ahead and like it, comment, share it with your friend. Uh, it blessed me just being in the room. And so I think it'll bless someone else. These two are amazing. I love you guys. Yeah. We'll see you guys next week. Thanks, guys. Peace. Bye.